And we welcome those of you joining us after a thrilling finish, Pitt, Cincinnati. We're here on the plains at Jordan Hare Stadium where it is packed. Everybody's wearing white today. Cal has come a long way from home and a real true road test for the Golden Bears against an improved, much more explosive Auburn team. First play from scrimmage, just a yard game for Jarquez Hunter, the all SEC running back. And they'll fake it to Hunter and then shovel it ahead. The ball up in the air, deflected and picked off by Cal into the end zone. Cade Uluave with a defensive touchdown in the first minute. Wow. If you're an Auburn fan, what a nightmare start. You see the look on Hugh Freeze just completely stunned with what just happened. Peyton Thorne rolling out. Cal did a fantastic job of coverage down the field. Nowhere to go with the football. Just trying to flip it to his running back. Kind of a goofy play. But credit the Cal Golden Bears for a great start. Well, I just heard from the referee. I, uh, the, the ruling on the field is a touchdown. Well, the ball was batted up in the air. And the question is, did it hit the turf? I think the Auburn fans watching a replay feel like the ball Let's see if we get a good look at it. Uh, I couldn't tell if it hit the turf or a foot. Really tough to tell with the camera angle, but I, from me and my first vantage point, I really think that goes off of Hunter's foot. Oh, no. falls on the ground. Yeah, it, it, it off the bounce. It bounced off the shin after Uluave tipped it, but that definitely hit the grass. But what a huge break for Auburn. So this one's going to be overturned. Not only will it not be a touchdown, that's not going to be an interception. That'll just be an incomplete pass. Yeah, if you're Auburn, definitely not the start you want. You're going to get this call to go your way, but now you're looking at a third and long. You got behind the sticks on first and second down. Definitely a place you don't want to live versus this defense. After the pass hit the ground. It's incomplete. All right, so it'll be third and nine instead of a pick six for Cal, which obviously is a huge swing. Take those points off the board. Auburn keeps the ball third down and long coming up. You know what, though? That football bounces Cal's way a lot often. Uh, a team that was tied for first place in FBS last year and turnovers created. Well, Peyton Thorne, second year as a starting quarterback here. A lot of success at Michigan State. His 2021 season was outstanding there. But there is a lot of pressure on Peyton Thorne to orchestrate a much more productive offense for the Tigers. Third down and long. Plenty of time in the pocket and a nice delivery of completion and a first down. Great throw and catch. Peyton Thorne recognizing zone coverage by the Cal Bears, finding his big tight end, Rivaldo Fairweather, for a great first down pickup for the Tigers. He was Auburn's leading receiver last year. A uh, handoff on first down, and that's Hunter for a short game. And not only was he the leading receiver, set a school record for receptions for a tight end with 38. Back to the previous play, just a great job of finding the soft space in the zone. That's a big tight end working on a linebacker, and that's a matchup that I expect Auburn to take advantage of all day long. I mean, they have so many weapons now that they didn't have last year. I think really that is the task for Thorne. You're going to have guys open. Just get them the ball. Make the simple plays. In the pocket, throws over the top, deep left sideline, and a perfect pass. Drop right in there to the super freshman Cam Coleman for a big game. That was a fantastic pass, but the thing I love most about it by the fourth year starter in Peyton Thorne is the timing of the throw. He lets that football go well before Cam Coleman comes open, working on Noel Williams, who's really usually a great defensive back for the Cow Bears, getting beat there going deep. That's 41 yards, and Cam Coleman, man, are they excited about this young man. He just turned 18. A true freshman who was one of the top players in the country in high school last year. And Auburn thinks he's their next superstar on offense. Empty backfield for Thorne on first down. Now going to scramble. 
being pursued and just throws it away. Incomplete. Good job by the Cal defense there. Nothing open downfield for Peyton Thorne. Buchanan got the pass rush on. Going back to the explosive play with Cam Coleman at the bottom of your screen. Just working a little stop and go. Double move does a fantastic job of selling the stop route. A lot of times young wide receivers get impatient on double moves. Not for Cam Coleman. He's the total package. Did a great job with his route and an even better throw by Peyton Thorne. Just physically so gifted, but already a nuanced understanding of how to play the position. A little pitch play on second down and well defended. That was Jeremiah Cobb, and all he did was get back to the line of scrimmage. Miles Williams, the fifth-year senior at safety, coming up to make the tackle on the perimeter. That's a great open field tackle against a great athlete. This Cal defense, they're coached extremely well by defensive coordinator Peter Sermon. And in last year's game, it was really a defensive battle. I mean, these two teams played last year in Berkeley, and Cal shut Auburn's offense down. Auburn threw for fewer than 100 yards in that game. Already off to a better start, but facing third and 10. From the shotgun, Thorne. A little shoulder fake. Thorne is going to throw. Caught! Touchdown! Keandre Lambert Smith got the toes down and the signal on the field is touchdown. The, now the hat came off. Yeah. He, so that's the key to the play. He, he reestablished himself. If a defender forces you out of bounds at the receiver position, you are allowed to come back into the field to play and catch the football. And it looks clear as day that he did have time to establish himself. What a heads-up play by the Penn State transfer. Wow. A tremendous effort from Keandre Lambert-Smith. So they took a look, and they confirmed that the call was made correctly. So Auburn gets a touchdown on its first drive. The extra point is up and good if you're Auburn that's the start you were looking for you know everyone wondered after last week's 73 to 3 win great start to the football game ESPN college football is presented by sling choose and customize your channel lineup sling let's do that Uh, Auburn scores a touchdown on their first drive of the game. So Cal getting ready to get the ball for the first time themselves. Bears brought some fans, some cheerleaders. Noel Williams deep to receive this kick. He returned one for a touchdown in week one. Cal had its own issues in week one against UC Davis. There's their head coach in his eighth year in Berkeley, Justin Wilcox, who, by the way, was not thrilled with the call that allowed the touchdown to count. We're going to look at that after this kickoff. One more time. It was a close call. And yeah, that'll be a touchback. So the Bears offense comes back on the field. But you can understand why Coach Wilcox had an issue. Absolutely. It's a really tough call. And it's because it's a judgment call. This is a gray area ruling. There's no set definition saying hey, a receiver needs to be in the field to play for one second or two seconds to reestablish himself. It's really a judgment call by the official. I understand why Justin Wilcox doesn't like it because he feels like the receiver was not back into the field to play long enough to be reestablished. It's a good explanation of the gray area in that rule. And he to give Lambert Smith a lot of credit. That was a heck of an effort. So now Cal's offense on the field for the first time, and Fernando Mendoza will throw on first down, and the Bears get an immediate first down on the catch by Maven Anderson. That's a great start by the Cal offense, and that's really how they want to play. They want to play in an RPO system where they have the choice to hand the football off or throw it based upon the box count and then play with some healthy tempo. And Cal's beat up already. It's week two. And on offense, the Bears are missing some key pieces, especially up front. A little slant throw to the tight end into a little small window. And that pass caught the standout player on offense for the Bears is there. Tailback Jay Knott for his status and a little more info on that. Let's welcome in Stormy Bonatoni. Yeah, Dave, there are a lot of questions about whether or not he would be available after going down with a right ankle injury in the third quarter of their opener last week. Head coach Justin Wilcox told me he is medically cleared. You see him on the field giving it a go when I asked if there would be any potential restrictions or pitch count Wilcox said no like anybody else he's gonna go until or unless 
he can't. All right, good stuff, Stormy. It's very important for Cal to have Ott. He gets stuffed on his first carry, a couple yards short of the first down. Rocky's one of the best running backs in the country. No question, and Cal is a different football team when he's in the lineup versus when he's not. We've we've been fortunate enough to cover Cal now going back last year a couple times, and when Ott was on the field, I tell you what, this offense just ran at a different level of efficiency. So if you're a Cal fan, you're great to see number one out there today. Here's the Bears first third down of the afternoon. Having to deal with all the noise Mendoza pocket collapsing but he dumps it down and that's Anderson again for another catch and just enough for the first down. Yeah working on Kay and Lee cornerback number four great job by Maven just working a little man to man mesh concept on the third and short versus man coverage. Great job by Mendoza seeing number 11 come across the middle of the field wide open. I think in theory Brock Cal would like to play some up tempo but if you're coming in here already a little beat up feeling like you may need to shorten the game I'm not sure how much of that we'll see high snap play fake Mendoza takes a hit but delivers a perfect back shoulder throw to Jonathan Brady for a big game. Boy, Eugene Asante came off the edge and laid the wood in the backfield on the running back, hitting Mendoza as he threw the football. But what a great throw under duress and an even better catch on the back shoulder. And they're beat up in the wide receiver room, Callis. So Jonathan Brady, who had one catch in week one for 25 yards into Auburn territory. Mendoza back to throw again. Now on the move, Fernando Mendoza is going to keep it and get a few, maybe just a couple positive yards. Running would probably not be the strength of his game. No, it's certainly not. He's got some decent straight line speed. He's an athlete, six foot five, 225 pounds, put on 10 pounds of muscle in the offseason. He took some really vicious hits last season. He's a tough guy. He's willing to hang in there late to make the throw, as we just saw a couple plays ago. He's got a great frame. But I want to go back to what you mentioned a second ago. You were talking about playing with tempo. The thing I like about that in an environment like this, it neutralizes a crowd and against a bigger defensive front, gets them running, gets them tired. So that will definitely be something to watch today. How much of that Cal uses their left guard jumped. And maybe the left tackle. Big 52, Nick Morrow. Morrow making his first career start on the road. Imagine making that first career start in this environment. He's got a tough task today. Former high school tight end and defensive end now playing left tackle at the collegiate ranks. I mean, we love Flagstaff, Arizona. It's a great little mountain town, but that's where he played his high school ball. He didn't face this in Flagstaff. It's a little different down here on the Plains. Second and 15. Mendoza has time across the middle and a nice catch right at the 20. Jonathan Brady again. His second catch already on this drive. Gain of 10. Great route by Jonathan Brady. Just a little kind of bender to the inside in the slot. Does a tremendous job working on Keontae Scott, one of the better cover corners for the Auburn Tigers. Third third down I'd expect Auburn to bring some pressure here to force Mendoza into making a quick decision with the football Javian Thomas in a young very fast tailback alongside Mendoza on third down and they're going to fake it to him and go over the top it is caught touchdown Isaiah Hunter the freshman wide receiver and what an answer from Cal they go right down the field and score a touchdown of their own what an impressive answer by the Cal offense in a hostile environment, taking the opening possession for your offense right down the field, matching touchdown for touchdown. And what a great play by Isaiah Hunter. Just matched up one on one on the outside. Auburn decided to bring in all out pressure, which presented the man to man matchup. Hunter doing a tremendous job going up there and scoring the touchdown. A great drive for the young quarterback, Mendoza. Eight plays, 75 yards. Kick is up and kick is good. And Cal on the road has tied this game. And for Auburn, no offense to Alabama AM, but it's a different week here in week two. Cal's got some playmakers. And that was a great throw and catch for the Bears to tie the game. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And truly one of the great places for college football in the country here in Auburn, Alabama.
Alabama, Hugh Freeze, his second year as a head coach here, and big expectations to do what he's done at every stop. Hugh Freeze has a track record at Ole Miss. He got that program turned around. A fourth year, 10 wins, beat Alabama a couple times. Liberty did it even faster. And the question is, can they make the year one to year two jump here on the Plains? The Auburn fans that we've been around these last couple days definitely think they're gonna. No question. Listen, Hugh Freeze has the formula for quick turnarounds, and he's doing a fantastic job with putting together quality recruiting classes. The building blocks are there for it. Yeah, it's sort of a combo of using some transfers, big time recruiting, getting his system set, and then counting on that guy, the quarterback, to understand what he wants to do on offense. Yeah, and what a start for Peyton Thorne today. Coming out three for five, 72 yards, already a touchdown. Great opening series for Auburn. And then on the flip side, Fernando Mendoza coming into this environment, 88,000 strong, six for six, absolutely perfect. A couple big third down conversions, and then sealed the drive with a touchdown pass. Great start for the quarterbacks today. So the Auburn offense on the field for the second time. Starting from their own 25 and a handoff straight ahead. A helmet came flying off and a penalty flag was thrown. A nice gain. We'll see what the penalty is. Xavier Carlton's helmet came off. It might have been ripped off. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Offense. Number 52. 15 yard penalty. First down. And number 44 can remain in the game. The foul the to come That's a good explanation. We saw Carlton leave the field, but if Cal wants him to, he can come back in for this play. Yeah, that's left guard Dylan Wade with the foul. Played left tackle last season for Auburn. Started every game out there on the left side. Moved inside, more of a natural fit. You're going to see just gets his hands a little bit high late in the play. <laughs> So a 15 yard penalty backs Auburn up inside their own 15. And officially 12 yards of penalty from where that foul was committed. Thorne throws on the run. Nice running catch. And a big chunk of that. Auburn gets back on first down. That's Brandon Frazier, one of the tight ends. Boy, this tight end room for the Auburn Tigers, it's impressive. Brandon Frazier, six foot seven, 262 pounds. He's one of those guys that, you know, that last play, he's wide open. But if even if he is, has great coverage on him, he's wide open because of his frame. Great player for the Auburn Tigers. That's already four pass plays for Auburn in this game of 15 yards or more. Thorne play fake and delivers a strike. A little slant coming in toward the middle, and that's Lambert Smith with the catch of the first down. Well, listen, Hugh Freeze hasn't shied away from it. He said last year we didn't have the talent we needed to be explosive. He went out, got that talent this year. Peyton Thorne throwing another great strike right over the middle to his Penn State transfer, Keandre Lambert Smith. I wonder if in the history of college football, one position group has gotten more of an influx in talent from one year to another than this wide receiver group at Auburn from last year to this year. It's certainly in the argument. Thorne pressured. Thorne escapes and now throws it away. So Cal brought some pressure and forced the incompletion. I mean, it's a good combo of both, exactly what you're talking about, Brock. It's the newcomers, the freeze four, the four true freshmen from in-state, all highly recruited, and then those transfers. Yeah, very highly touted true freshman class, but then you also have the veterans in Lambert Smith and Jackson who played Cal at quarterback, uh, played quarterback at Cal last season and came in. He, he's transferred into the slot position, kind of a natural fit, but once again, just so much talent at the wide receiver position. Peyton Thorne's going to have a lot of fun with these guys this year. And the guy Cam Coleman, who had the big catch on the first drive, wide left. Thorne looking right here, though, and dumps it short. What a hit. The catch and the completion. But Craig Woodson, the safety, was right there. It'll be third down. Let's go down to Stormy. Well, and Hugh Freeze had a ton of compliments when it came to this wide receiver class. He went as far as to say it reminded him of another batch of very talented wideouts he recruited in 2015-16 at Ole Miss. A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf, Van Jefferson may have heard of them. He also said he had the ability to redshirt them. They could be patient. These guys, you can't be. Flag thrown, pass incomplete, intended for Coleman. Auburn wanted a flag on the back end of that play. It never came, but I think Cal was offsides. I think you're right, Flem. Offsides, defense number 88, five-yard penalty, third down. 
That's TJ Bowlers jumping offside, the Wisconsin transfer, but great job by the quarterback, Peyton Thorne, using his hard count on third down to pick up a free five yards. Yeah, he saw the hard count. He got the jump, and he knew he had a free play. Uh, now it's third and three. It is pretty high praise from Hugh Freeze if you're talking about A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf, and that's what these yeah. freshman wide receivers could be. And Van Jefferson, I mean, you're talking about three big-time players at the NFL level. It's going to be exciting to watch these freshmen develop. Third and two. Thorne rolling left, throws middle, and it's knocked away. It hit the hands of Fairweather. He didn't catch it cleanly at first. He had a drop in last week's game, and now it's fourth down. And I, and I put that in completion on Peyton Thorne. That's a throw that the fourth-year starter needs to make. Fairweather's open to pick up a fresh set of downs, but the football's behind him, which is what allows cornerback Marcus Harris to come in with the pass breakup. So despite that, Auburn is going to go for it on fourth down from just across midfield. Tight end Frazier came in motion. We'll see if Thorne tries to draw Cal off sides again. Play clock winding down, down to two, down to one, and they will not run a play. They'll take a timeout. I, I, I like tr trying to get Cal to jump offside, but let's not burn a timeout to do that. Nevertheless, 7-7 seven, seven here at Jordan Hare. All right, let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Verbo, Georgia, Ohio State. What a performance by Texas today at the Big House. I was going to say, that was super impressive by the Longhorns going on the road, playing in a hostile environment, and really winning convincingly. Penn State got tested at home by Bowling Green, came out ahead in that one. So an interesting day of college football. Well, you burn the timeout if you're still going to go for it, and it looks like that's what Hugh Freeze wants to do. Unless Peyton Thorne could punt the ball. They snap it, and they are going for it. Thorne over the top, trying to find Coleman incomplete. Really good coverage from Marcus Harris. So after all that, Auburn goes for it and doesn't get it. That was fantastic coverage by the fifth-year senior Marcus Harris coming over from Idaho. Really playing a good game early on. And, you know, I like the confidence that Hugh Freeze is trying to instill into his offense. Hey, I believe in you guys. Let's go pick up this first down at midfield. But early in a football game, especially against a quality opponent, I'm a big fan of playing the field position game and play the long game. That's a big stop for Cal because they get the ball just short of midfield now. Marcus Harris is a good player. We're going to be talking more about him. Idaho all of a sudden has a program and they're sending talent all around the country bad snap they wheel it around back left and a nice move to get to the sideline <laughs> Mikey Matthews did a lot to get some positive yardage there on first down all right a little create creativity from new offensive coordinator Mike Blesh. Mendoza rolling to the right doing the old throwback screen you see the offensive line set up on the sideline and Mikey Matthews did a tremendous job of getting some positive yards. He did. That's a good play on first down. Second down and maybe four into Auburn territory. Ott got absolutely swarmed. Man, as soon as he had the ball, there were two or three Auburn defenders on him. Well, from the second level, linebacker Eugene Asante just fires like a missile as soon as he sees that it's a run play. Comes downhill, blows up the play. And Cal, their offensive line, you know, they're thin right now. They're missing their starting center, starting right guard. You got a redshirt freshman making his first road start at left tackle. They're thin, and they're going to have a big challenge against that Auburn front. No success running the ball so far. Mendoza takes a snap from the pocket. Mendoza. Is going to run. Mendoza got away from the first would-be tackler, and he got enough to get the first down. Talk about an athlete. Fernando Mendoza making it happen on third down for his football team. I love the patience in the pocket. Nothing open downfield. Credit Auburn with the coverage. But Mendoza makes him pay with his legs, picks up a fresh set of downs. I mean, that was Keyron Crawford, one of their better pass rushers that he got away from. 
So tell the play-by-play -play guy, I can run. <laughs> well, that was a big conversion. So now play clock winding down, and everybody's pointing at each other. They're going to talk it over. I think Cal's saying Auburn either barked out something or tried to draw Cal offsides. You see more of an emphasis from this from officials around college football. No question. They're looking for disconcerting signals every game, whether it's a clap, a noise by the defensive front, anything that triggers. Ball yep. start. Offense. Number 10. Five yard penalty. First down. Now that's the tight end, Corey Deitches. Yeah, Justin Wilcox has wanted an explanation. Got to wonder if Auburn said something to make Corey Deitches jump off sides the way he did. It's a very abnormal start to a play. Well, first and 15, the penalty was against Cal. Ott gets the handoff, and again, there's just nowhere to run. It's pretty clear, isn't it, what Auburn's game plan is on defense? Oh, it is, no question. And, and, and this is what Auburn wanted to be able to do. They wanted to be able to stop the run game with just their front four. You know, they want to be able to cover out with their linebackers and stop the RPO game. And right now, that Auburn front four, they're doing a fantastic job. Big number 15, Keldrick Falk there on that last play in the backfield. I'll tell you what, he's someone to reckon with at six foot six, 288 pounds. I mean, they, they don't have those two offensive linemen. They also have Braden Miller, one of their top backups at left guard, missing a couple top wide receivers. Mendoza steps up and throws and whistled one in there for a nice gain, just short of the 30 and just short of a first down. Mendoza doing a great job in the pocket. When the pocket breaks down, he does what all great quarterbacks do. They climb vertically up the pocket. They keep their eyes down the field. And he was able to find his wide receiver in the open voided zone. Seven for seven to start this game on the road for Fernando Mendoza. We asked the coaching staff, we said, is Fernando ready to play in this environment? And they said to us, they go, if there's any quarterback, it's Fernando. And by the way, there's something that's going on. It's not just on our folks with the graphics. The official stats are all messed up. It's not first and 10. It's third down and a yard or two. They're entering these plays in incorrectly. A handoff and Cal on the ground will get the first down with JV and Thomas. Now it's first and 10. That's a huge pickup for Cal. And, and don't forget, they started this drive with a short field because Hugh Freeze elected to go for it on fourth down. The Cal Bears had a great job on the stop. And now from Fernando Mendoza is putting together a very quality drive. And I think exactly what Cal wants to do today, you love the option of quick tempo. Yep. But they on the road already a little beat up. They would like to shorten this game. They're working the clock. Thomas gets another carry and got to the left side. And JV and Thomas, the sophomore from McClymans High School in Oakland, a local kid with a nice game. Yeah, he's a really talented player. He's, he's got electric speed, tough guy. He's willing to protect in the pass game. Somebody, when Jaden Ott goes off the field, he's able to step in and, and really not lose anything at that running back position for the Cal Bears. The Cal could let the quarter end here. We'll see if they do that. Ott's on the sideline. He has not been productive yet. It's Ben Thomas. They do snap the ball. Play fake it. Mendoza trying to get away. Heaves it toward the end zone and threw it away. And that will be the final play of the first quarter, which you have to give Cal credit. They're hanging in there. Absolutely. Great presence by the Cal Bears early on. 7-7. Wilcox, you know that this crowd is going to be pumping here on third down. What do you need to see from your quarterback? Oh, I think quarterback's doing a good job. we got to do better offensively in the run game. Get us in some more manageable second, third downs, and then defensively we got to be better in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Uh, Justin Wilcox has to be happy overall with how his team is playing here in a very tough environment. First play of the second quarter is a third and a long three. Mendoza takes a snap. Mendoza 
Still looking downfield, and he delivers it. Another catch for Jonathan Brady, and another Cal first down, a gain of 14. What a great play by Fernando Mendoza. Third down, big time pickup. Pocket breaks down. Cal's just trying to run a little mesh, kind of man-to-man -man beater. Mendoza has to get outside the pocket, shows off his athleticism once again, and Brady making the big time catch for the fresh set of downs for the Golden Bears. Cal may have found a new playmaker. Transfer from New Mexico State, Jonathan Brady, he's got four catches already. The snap, Mendoza was not expecting it. He handed it off, and Thomas wasn't expecting it. And that play went backwards. Cal's lucky they didn't turn it over. Yeah, a little bit of miscommunication between center Swinney and Fernando Mendoza. Swinney not normally playing center. Once again, we have a backup in there for Will McDonald. Great job by Fernando, though, handling the snap and not making a bad play worse. Really, in a lot of ways, it's their third string center because Matthew Wyckoff can play center, and he's limited today. Second down, and it is second and goal to go from a long way out. Mendoza toward that sideline and a gang tackle. Positive game, but not much, maybe three or four yards. It's going to be third and goal from outside the 10. It's the Maryland transfer, Corey Deitches, listed at a tight end, but really kind of this hybrid tight end, wide receiver, extremely athletic. And he poses a big-time mismatch for linebackers and safety, somebody that I expect to have a big game today for Cal. How about the Bears? Five for five so far today on third down. It's superb. In this environment, I mean, you hear how loud this place is at home, 88,000 strong. Very impressive by the young signal caller and the rest of his offense. Four receivers and Justin Wilcox runs out on the field and calls a timeout. So he did not like the look of that one first of the half. at the start. So Cal will use its first timeout of this first half with the big play coming up, third and goal from just outside the 10. You heard Justin Brock say he's very pleased with the way Fernando Mendoza is playing so far. Absolutely, and he said he'd be ready to go, and he wasn't lying. 10 for 10, 111 yards, and already a touchdown. But the thing that really jumps out to me is how clutch and impressive he's been on third down. When he needs a fresh set of down for his team, he's able to find the open target. He's been picking apart the Auburn zone. Auburn's going to have to find a way to get him uncomfortable, whether it's bringing pressure, whether it's simulating pressure, maybe changing the pitcher after the snap, pre to post snap, because right now Mendoza is in complete control. He is an amazing story. It was only a couple of years ago. He was committed to play football at Yale. And Cal had a decommitment very late in the process. They watched him throw. They said, you can come to Cal. And now he's a starter, basically unrecruited by any sort of power program out of high school. Auburn showing pressure off the edge. They just rushed three, though, and Cal, I think, moved. Uh, number 11, Maven Anderson, the wide receiver, the guy who left early. This is a really tough spot if you're Cal. It's third and goal to go. But you're outside the 15-yard line. Not a lot of plays in your playbook for this situation. If you're Fernando Mendoza, you need to be very smart with the football because you know you have three points in your back pocket right now. Yeah, this will be interesting. How aggressive do they get? Third and goal. They'll throw a quick hitter. Anderson catches, and he lunged, but he was out of bounds at about the seven. I don't fault him at all for using that second effort, thinking he might have stayed in bounds, but he was not close. Oh, that was a great effort by Maven Anderson, and I love the decision by Fernando Mendoza. Take a quick completion, see if you can get some positive yards, and allow your field goal team to go out there and get some points. That was a good call. That foot stepped out. So now Ryan Coe, the place kicker. Ball be spotted right around the 15, so a 25-yarder here. Good snap and hold, and the kick hits one of those uprights and ricochets away from 25 yards out. After all that, Cal comes away without a point. Whoop. 
Well, if you're Hugh Freeze in Auburn, you feel fantastic after your second offensive series ended on downs. You went for it on fourth down. You didn't pick it up at midfield. To come away and not give up any points, you feel great for the Auburn Tigers. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Sling. After Cal took more than seven minutes off the clock, they miss a 25-yard field goal. Auburn gets the ball back, and the first play tipped up in the air. No Williams with the interception. So Cal comes up with a turnover on the very first play. Cam Coleman, the freshman receiver, he got at least a hand on it. Knocked up in the air, and there was Williams. What a great heads up play by Noel Williams there for the turnover. But Cam Coleman, the highly touted true freshman, some say the best wide receiver in last year's class. He's, he's known to have sure hands. He obviously has huge expectations coming into this season, but that's a grab he needs to make. Peyton Thord read the defense perfect, put the football out in stride. But Noel Williams there for the sudden change. Well, talk about the roller coaster for Cal. You have this drive, you take all this clock off. You get into short field goal position. You clang one off the upright, and you're thinking, how do we come away with no points on that? And the very next play, you get the ball right back. It's a little reminiscent of last year's game. You felt like that game, both teams had so many missed opportunities, and here already you see a missed field goal and a turnover backed up. It's so true. Last year, Auburn turned it over four times at Cal, and Cal missed three field goals in their four-point loss. Nobody on either side wanted to repeat that history. Straight ahead run on first down for Jay Nott, and he gets a couple. The run game has not been there early for the Cal Bears. Give a lot of credit to that front three for Auburn, but this is something that Justin Wilcox and Mike Blesch, they're going to want to stick with. You're going to need this run game, especially in this environment as the game goes along. So second and eight for Cal. Receiver came in motion. Not a great snap again. Ott this time a little more room, and you can see some of the skill set, even if he's not 100%, that makes him such a good back. He got five. I love the patience that Jaden Ott plays the running back position with. You saw in the last play, he played a little bit of peekaboo with the linebackers. Got him to go to the right, cut out the hole on the left. Just his patience is so special. After the missed field goal, we saw Ryan Longwell had a long, great NFL career. Cal alum, who's part of the Cal coaching staff, talking with Ryan Coe, the place kicker, who might be called upon any minute now to try another one. I'm sure he was telling him, hey, we're going to need you as this game goes along. Have a short memory and turn the page. The two of them are there standing next to one another. Third down and two. Mendoza throws, and it's caught a touchdown! Hunter, his second of the game already. And somehow he came wide open at the goal line. Scramble drill. It's one of those deals. You'll always hear a defensive coordinator say, hey, you got to plaster. When the quarterback gets outside the pocket, plaster and cover the wide receivers. But Isaiah Hunter did a tremendous job of keeping the play alive as this quarterback got outside the pocket. Caleb Wooden in coverage. No match for Hunter. And Isaiah Hunter, the redshirt freshman from Salinas, who they told us that hey, this guy's got a chance to be a really good player. He's got two touchdowns in the first half at Auburn. The extra point from Ryan Coe is up and good. What a strange sequence, and Cal ends up in the end zone. Well, great job with a sudden change in complimentary football for the Cal Bears. Get the turnover and punch in a touchdown. Well, coming up later tonight, another SEC-ACC matchup. I know it's kind of weird with Cal's involved, but yeah, they're in the ACC. It's number 14, Tennessee, number 24, NC State, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC. The SEC fans are a little stunned here at Jordan-Hare. Not too worried yet, it doesn't look like, but their team is down 14-7. Their offense, Brock, has run one play, one play, in the last nine minutes of game action. 
And that one play was an interception. And the Cal quarterback, Fernando Mendoza, is having an amazing first half. Just an absolutely fantastic first half here in a very hostile environment on the road. So the touchback, Auburn's offense, they, they need, not only do they need something positive, they just need to have the ball for more than a few seconds. You're exactly right. They just need to stay ahead of the sticks. They need positive plays on first and second down, being third and manageable. And you got to keep that offensive unit out there to string together a drive. Right now, Auburn's defense, they can't get off the field on third down and credit Cal's offense for that. But you're right, it's been this keep away game with the football. Auburn needs to stay out there on the field with their offense for a while. One play in the last nine minutes of game time from scrimmage for the Auburn offense. So first and 10 for the 25. And a handoff, Hunter right side got dropped for a loss. Well, neither team's really running the ball effectively. Jarquez Hunter, preseason first team all SEC running back, but Nate Burrell just swallowed him up. There's just no air in the front right now. That, that front five for Auburn, they're not creating any space for their running backs. Give a lot of credit to that big defensive front for Cal. Cal does have some talent on the defensive line. Second and 11. Play fake, Thorne going deep. Thorne incomplete. Trying to hit Robert Lewis. Auburn fans thought there was contact, but coverage once again. Marcus Harris. Yeah, that's Jair Smith in coverage. Might have got away with a late little tug. I don't think the officials saw it. Great play by the redshirt junior out of Charlotte. So Harris and Smith were both there, but you're right. That was Smith who was in the coverage and yeah, just got his hand right on Robert Lewis's arm and slowed him down just a step. I think that was a great throw by Peyton Thorne, possibly a missed call by the officials. This becomes a big play in this game. Third and 11. Pressure came. Thorne is going to try to run for it, and that's not going to work. He gets tackled at the 31. Craig Woodson, I think he read that beautifully from his safety spot, and it's fourth down. Yeah, that was great hustle by safety Craig Woodson and defensive tackle Nate Burrell to finish the play. See defensive coordinator Peter Sermon all fired up for his defense, getting off the field once again, and that's exactly what could not happen for Auburn's offense. Craig Woodson coming out of the middle of the field, forcing Peyton Thorne to cut back, and the big number 98 is there to clean up the play. Good point by you. Woodson had a long way to go to get there and make that play. So Auburn's going to punt. Oscar Chapman angles that one way deep. The fair catch inside the 15. So it was a good punt, but the Cal defense comes up with another stop, and they'll have the ball when we come back. Four now. For this moment, this is where your feet are, and this is where you should be all in at. You get to represent one of the greatest fan bases in all of America, and it should be done with tremendous passion today. Well, that was pregame in the Auburn locker room with their head coach, Hugh Freeze. Those 88,000 fans are feeling a little more nervous right now. Cal's going to throw the ball on first down on a little dump down to the tight end. Jack Andrews, who is a good player for a positive gain on first down. Yeah, fantastic player for the Cal Bears. Someone who played a lot as a redshirt freshman a season ago. Very seasoned, good, big physical guy. You see how Cal's going to use him today. He's a dynamic weapon when you can get outside the pocket on bootlegs and rollouts. And Cal now is just dominating the time of possession in this first half. It'll be second and two. Their three drives, touchdown, then the long drive that took a lot of clock where they missed the field goal, and then a touchdown. Hand off, that's Ott for a first down right side run. Well, and to your point, if you're Cal, you couldn't have drawn up a better start to this football game. You know, this, this is a dream start, traveling across the country, playing in a hostile environment against a very quality opponent. It's really been all things Cal, except for Auburn had a successful first drive, and it really is the time of possession. Auburn's defense cannot get off the field, but credit Cal for converting on third down. Finding a way to move the ball without a whole lot from their superstar running back, Jaden Ott, although that was a nice run. First and 10. Mendoza throws, and that one completed right near the 35 yard line. There was a penalty flag. The receiver in motion, it was very strange. 
That was a running back, Kadarius Callaway. I don't think he did that legally. It distracted me as the play was starting because I'm watching Callaway turn up field. Yeah, that, it, it, just the timing was messed up on that one. Started shaving some ground going up the field. You'll look at the top of your screen, number two going in motion. Callaway can't get going vertically until that football snapped. Yeah. So that negates the first down catch. It'll be first and 15. Well, that clock moving under eight minutes to go first half. Play fake, Mendoza throws and a nice catch. Wow, what an effort from Mason Starling. What a great throw and catch just on the RPO. Mendoza had the option to hand the football off if he felt like that was a better fit, but he's taking advantage of the one-on-one -on -one matchup outside. Great throw and catch by the Cal Bears. Well, the only incompletion for Mendoza was a throwaway. Otherwise, he's been perfect. Another false start from Cal. I mean, all, the one thing Cal can't do is get the ball snapped properly. Well, that was on the center. That's the fifth pre-snap penalty of the first half. Yeah, and some of that's to be expected in this environment, but Swinney, normally a backup guard, thrust into the starting position. We're really basically, Cal is looking at playing their third string center, essentially. Fernando Mendoza, Swinney, they have to find a way to get on the same page with the Cadence. So another first and 15. Throw to the outside and a broken tackle. That is at number nine, Mason Starling again, and he got 15 yards and a Cal first down. What a great play by Starling. Making a move out in space, picking up positive yards for Cal. Tell you what, Auburn is going to have to find a way to get Mendoza off of his spot, get him uncomfortable, because right now the redshirt sophomore quarterback is a cool customer in that pocket, and he's making great decisions with the football. 14-7 Bears lead, missing some of their top offensive players. They are moving the ball. And on the outside, the Cal receivers are just beating Auburn's DBs. Hand off, and that was Callaway with no room to run. Got dropped for a loss of the yard. And that's what Auburn expects out of that defensive front. McLeod, Falk, Rakes, Bleedy. They got some big bodies and some very talented guys up front. They expect to force some negative runs. They haven't really done that today. It was a great play there, though, on first down. JV and Thomas comes back in the game at tailback. Alongside Mendoza, second and 11, just across midfield. And that clock continues to roll. Play fake. Mendoza flushed, and Mendoza will throw for a completion along the sideline. How many times has he done that in this first half? Tell you what, he's seeing the field really, really well. You can tell he's comfortable out there. The moment is not too big for him. And Starling with his third reception on this series alone. You got Brady, you got Starling, you got Hunter. Some of the young, inexperienced wideouts for Cal are playing really well. Yeah, and they're definitely in sync when it comes to the scramble drill. Mendoza doing a great job of finding open targets outside the pocket today. So now it's third and three. Andres, the tight end, in motion. Mendoza throws across the middle, knocked away incomplete. And a good play on the ball, Jaron Thompson. The safety knocked it down. Tremendous play by Jaron Thompson. Auburn was playing man-to-man -man coverage. Thompson doing a great job of driving down on the slant for the pass breakup. And this is interesting because Cal hinted to us that they might play a lot of field position today, but they're going for it. Yeah, I understand why. Uh, up to this point in the game, you really feel like you've controlled the momentum of the football game. 
But I will say this, you do have a lot of things going for you. Auburn has not moved the football. If I'm the head coach for Cal, I'm punching the football deep and pinning Auburn back. Play clock is about to wind down and Cal's gonna take a timeout. Let's check in in studio for an update. Wow, thank you, Kevin. Well, that would be a shocker. I mean, for SEC fans, this would be a huge shocker here. Cal's played well, and it looks to me, Brock, like they've changed their minds after that timeout. Yeah, and I think this is a really good decision by Justin Wilcox. So many things have gone right for your football team in the first half. Don't forget, you start the second half with receiving the opening kickoff, so you're going to get the ball right back, pin Auburn deep, and make them drive the length of the field to go get points before half. They do not want to return here. Keontae Scott, one of the better punt returners in the country. So Lachlan Wilson, the punter, his job is to not let him return one. And over end. And the ball's going to bounce inside the 10 into the end zone. Not a bad punt, but Cal couldn't get down there and down it. So Auburn will have it at the 20. SEC football lineup rolls on over on the SEC network at 415 Eastern. Number six, Ole Miss. They are underway hosting Middle Tennessee. And uh, number 15, Oklahoma hosting Houston exclusively on ESPN Plus and SEC Network Plus tonight. You got Missouri, who's in the top 10 now. Missouri is against Buffalo. Florida, Sanford, number 18, LSU hosting Nichols. Every game also available on the ESPN app. You can watch anywhere. Hugh Freeze's offense comes back on the field. Yeah, you want to get into rhythm right here. Last week, you hang 73 points on Alabama A&M. Everything basically went right. But you're kind of getting your first taste of adversity. It's time for Auburn to find a way to string together a drive. This is not Alabama A&M today. Cal's come to play. Thorne was going to hand it off, decided to keep it because Cal defended it so well. And he gets across the 25 out to the 26. I think that's a great decision by Peyton Thorne. Ryan McCullough, number 43 for Cal, was in the backfield to make the play on the running back. Great recognition by Thorne to pull it and pick up some positive yards. That might count as Auburn's best running play of the game so far. Second and four. Thorne across the middle, incomplete. He had his man. Lambert Smith was there. It'll be third down. Yeah, that's a throw you're going to want to see Peyton Thorne make, especially in his fourth season of being a starting quarterback. Keandre Lambert Smith is wide open on the glance route, which is just basically a deeper slant. That's a throw. If you get it to Lambert Smith in stride, he has a chance to take it the distance. Peyton Thorne is 6 for 14. Fernando Mendoza on the other side is 16 for 17. So it's third and four for Auburn. Thorne going to roll right and try to keep it. And Thorne, I think he did just get enough. We'll see. I don't know. Actually, they spotted it short of the 30. We know he had to get to the 30. And Hugh Freeze was not happy with that spot. That is not a first down. It's fourth and a half a yard. Yeah, and Thorne's shocked. He's got two palms up saying, what, what do you mean I'm short? He thought he was at the line to gain. He was spotted a half a yard short. And Omer's going to send the punt team out there. I couldn't tell from that replay. It's really close. I mean, where was the ball when he, he kind of had the ball back instead of forward? Yeah, where's the football when he first steps out of bounds? Really tough to see with those angles. Hugh Freeze not pleased. And a penalty flag thrown because Auburn wasn't ready to punt. They committed delay of game. That'll move them five yards backwards. I mean, I, I know why Hugh is unhappy with that spot. It was questionable. Yeah, and I don't think he blames his quarterback. Peyton Thorne's the ultimate competitor, tough guy. If, if he would have thought it was going to be that close, you know, he would have stuck his foot in the ground, lowered his shoulder, and picked up a fresh set. Instead, Cal, with 3.29 on the clock, is going to get the ball back. You mentioned how they get the ball at the start of the second half. A shorter punt this time, much shorter. Fair catch made across the 35. Decent field position for the Cal offense. 
before Cal gets the ball. NFL back tomorrow. Kick off your week one NFL Sunday with the countdown crew at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN and the app. And then on Monday night, the 55th season of Monday Night Football gets underway. And what a matchup it is. The Jets going on the road to take on the 49ers. 8 Eastern on ESPN, ABC, ESPN Deportes, ESPN Plus. You got Peyton and Eli on ESPN 2. SVP and the Monday Night Countdown crew. We'll get it started at 6 Eastern and Aaron Rodgers healthy and ready to go. One of the all-time greats at Cal. The, the numbers really don't do it justice how unbelievably great of a college quarterback he was. Just a fantastic player. You think New York Jets fans are uh, excited to get this season started the way last season started. But yeah, Aaron Rodgers at Cal, just an unbelievable career. Lit up the skies on the West Coast and a ton of fun to watch. Marshawn Lynch, his teammate, the game he played at the Coliseum at USC against one of the great SC teams was just an all-time performance. A little check down to the tight end, Andres, who gets wrestled out of bounds. The clock will keep moving on first down for Cal. So big picture here, Brock, ideally for the Bears, they end the half with the ball and get the ball to start the second half. This is an extremely critical drive for both teams. You just you just hit the nail on the head. If Cal's able to find a way to drive down, go get some points, and then to get the, the ball to start the third quarter, that's huge. Auburn realizes that they need to get a stop here. Fernando Mendoza's acting like Aaron Rodgers in that game at the Coliseum today with how on point he's been. Cal will hand it off to Ott on second down and short, but he did not get there. Jaden Ott's had a hard time getting anything going on the ground. There's, there's just nowhere to go. There's just no holes. There's no open lanes. Credit Auburn doing a great job with those big, big three bodies right in the middle of the defensive line, and then you're getting some edge presence as well. Linebackers are doing a great job of filling in. Just nowhere to go in the run game. So it's third and two. Auburn not using a timeout. They have two left. So Cal's going to let the clock wind down as far as possible, and I think they're going to use a timeout themselves. They're going to let it go to the two-minute warning. That's true. They don't have to. The two-minute timeout in college football. Cal has it a big third down when we come back. Kevin Connors in studio coming up on the principal halftime report. Much more on a statement win today by Texas in the big house. Quinn Ewers was spectacular. Plus a thriller in Stillwater between Arkansas and Oklahoma State game that needed double overtime and Notre Dame playing come from behind football right now. All coming up when you join Trevor Maddich and me on the principal halftime report. Flim. All right, thanks, Kevin. We'll look forward to that. Out of the two-minute timeout, Cal's going to get to the line quickly, play fake it, throw it to the tight end, and convert the first down. You can't do it any better than that. Love the play call by Mike Blesch. The old leg pass. You see a lot of NFL teams run this in third and short moments. You're just getting your quarterback. You're selling run downhill. You get the linebackers to just settle and hesitate for a half a second, which is what allows the tight end injuries to outflank the backers. K.N. Lee, one of the top defensive backs for Auburn, is down and hurting after that play. I mean, that's a huge conversion. Now, Cal, Auburn's got the two timeouts, but Cal, you can't guarantee you're going to end this half with the ball, but you can come pretty close. That was huge. And, and you silenced this crowd. I mean, you heard how loud this crowd was on third down. They're trying to get behind their team. And credit the Cal Bears. They just keep picking up first down after first down. They've been fantastic in third down scenarios. Seven for nine on the day. Seven for nine on third down on the road. That is amazing. So Ken Lee will get up and leave the field. Yeah, and don't forget, coming into this game, Cal was kind of in a quarterback battle. I think they found their guy. I do, too. Let's go down to Stormy. Yeah, and with that offensive coordinator, Mike Blush told us between Fernando Mendoza and Chandler Rogers, he was waiting for somebody to step up and make a statement through one half of football. I think a statement has certainly been made. And Mendoza coming off the sideline, I feel like every time after an offensive drive, he showed composure, poise, leadership, all of the things that you're looking for in your QB1. Well, his teammates think he's going to be president of the United States someday, so. <laughs> Nickname the mayor for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> mayor might be aiming a little low. <laughs> 
got to start somewhere. First and ten. Mendoza will check it down to his running back out in the open. And what a hit delivered by Javian Thomas, who's only 190 pounds. You wouldn't know it from the finish of that catch and run. Well, the coaching staff said this kid is physical and tough, and he put that on display, lowering his shoulder and picking up some positive yards. So now Cal's willing to go a little quicker tempo, a minute and a half to go. And they're on Auburn's side of the field. Mendoza is going to be hit from behind to go down. Keldrick Falk. Auburn finally gets to the quarterback. Yeah, that's a coverage sack there. Auburn did a great job in coverage. I didn't love the formation by Cal. They put three wide receivers to the boundary. The spacing wasn't great. Mendoza had nowhere to go with the football. The credit big number 15 for working the edge. And that's one of those deals where Mendoza has to have that internal clock and realize, hey, I got to get rid of this football because the big guys are coming after me. Timeout taken, and I believe it's Auburn who took that timeout. They're second of the first half. Well, it's third and seven coming up, a minute and nine seconds on the clock. Third down's really been the difference in the game. When you look at Cal, seven for nine at this point, the question is, can Auburn get off the field right now and give their offense a chance to go get some points before half? So a big play coming up for the Auburn defense. Uh, look, this is an Auburn program that's got so much proud tradition. But the last time they won the SEC was back in 2013. We remember the national championship in 2010. They haven't won a bowl game since 2018. They haven't had a winning season since that abbreviated COVID year, which around here is just, that's unacceptable. Yeah, the, the success has not been there for the Auburn Tigers, and this is a fan base that expects to compete for national titles. So third and seven. Mendoza, pressure comes, and he takes another big hit. Falk gets to him again. And Mendoza's slow to get up. Man, he got popped and did well just to hang on to the ball. That is a monster hit by Keldrick Falk, six foot six, 288 pounds. Just a sophomore. Great defensive strategy here by Auburn. Just overloading the right side of the offensive line by Cal. Cal not able to slide out, and which that's what allows Keldrick Falk to come scot-free and lay a huge hit on Mendoza. And you said it, Flem, credit Mendoza for holding on to that football because, well, that's a monster hit in the backfield. So now Cal's going to have to punt the ball with a minute and six seconds to go in the half. So the Auburn defense, that was their best two-play sequence of the half by far. It's exactly what they needed. And there's plenty of time to go get points if you're Auburn. And, and for Peyton Thorne, it's time, right? There's been some open receivers today for Auburn that he's missed. He had a phenomenal game last week. He, he's coming into this ball game with high expectations. I know this fan base has it. His coaching staff has it for him. It's time for him to put together a drive and go get some points before half. So Scott, the return man. Lachlan Wilson, the punter for Cal. That one might be returnable. We'll see. Scott catches and then drops it and has to fall on the ball. Wow, that would have been a total disaster. But Scott avoids the turnover, so the ball's at the 12. Well, uh, Peyton Thorne, uh, 2021, it was such a brilliant year for him. 22 at Michigan State, not quite as good, still good. Last season, he did not have a lot of help on this Auburn offense. And that's really the key to last season. When you talk to the coaching staff this week, they, they knew that they needed to improve at the skill position. They went out, whether it was via high school or the portal, they re retooled the wide receiver room, and Peyton Thorne has plenty of weapons at his disposal this season. So let's see what Auburn can do with a minute to go in the half. The throw out to the right sideline. Line, catch and out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Not a big gain. The tight end Fairweather, who had the game winning catch in Berkeley in the final moments of last year's matchup. Good start to the drive for Auburn. You always want to find a positive play on first down. Peyton Thorne doing a great job of taking what the defense presented in their soft zone coverage. On second down and three. Thorne now going backwards and a penalty flag thrown. Thorne will dump it out of bounds. That's going to be a hold against Auburn.
Couldn't find anywhere to go with the ball. Yeah, nowhere to go with the football. Great coverage by Cal. Trying to escape the pocket. Makes it really hard on your offensive line and running back who are pass protecting. They don't know where the quarterback is, and when you scramble outside that pocket sometimes. Oh, Offense number 13, 10 yard penalty, second down. So now if you're Hugh Freeze, your strategy might change. You got 44 seconds and you're inside the 10. Cal does have a timeout just in case Justin Wilcox gets another negative play. Yeah, if I'm Auburn here, I think you got to lick your wounds and go into halftime. Put this football on the ground, hand it off to your running back, get that clock rolling, and get to halftime and make some adjustments. We might hear some cranky Auburn fans if that happens that way. We'll see. Second down and long. And they do hand the ball off straight ahead and a nice game. Really nice game. Well, somehow Cal didn't expect what I think you and I expected. Hunter gets outside the 35, and now after that 27-yard pickup, Auburn's going to go quick. That was a fantastic job by the right side of the offensive line between Chambers and Wright, opening up a huge hole for Hunter. So now they'll throw the ball on first down. Thorne gets away. Thorne is trying to get to the sidelines. He does. That stops the clock with 25 seconds to go. They have a field goal kicker with a monster leg, a true freshman kicker. Made a 63-yarder in the spring game. So they, they, they have a chance maybe to get the ball across midfield and try a long field goal. There's Towns Magoo. 25 seconds, no timeouts. Got to find a way to push the ball down the field. And if you pick up a first down, the clock will stop. Got to run up there and spike the football. All the experience of Thorne, you would figure this would be one of his strengths, is managing situations like this. He'll get flushed again. Thorne out into the open. Thorne into Cal territory, goes into a slide. He started that slide at about the 42. So let's see if they can get it spiked with 18 seconds on the clock. They do. Nope, they haven't yet. Now the clock rolls. They fumbled. I, Thorne. I thought he dropped the ball. I thought he did too. A little penalty flag thrown. Two penalty flags thrown. Man, that was not handled very well. No, the Auburn players are upset because the official moved the football back right when they were getting ready to snap the football. The Tigers lost a couple seconds. They lost time, and then that, that, that snap was not real clean. The quarterback that was a fantastic explanation by the official Thorne bobbles the snap. You're not able to pick up the football off the ground and then spike it down. That's an issue. Fumbled snap there. But if you're an Auburn Tigers fan, you still have time to spike the football and either throw a Hail Mary or try a long field goal. You just got to be ready to snap the ball on the whistle. Looks like they're going to try to throw one down the field. Now Cal calls timeout after the clock was rolling there. Huh. So Cal calls timeout. Hugh Freeze is unhappy with the officials. I don't know what he could be unhappy with. That's that's intentional grounding. As a quarterback center, you have to have a clean exchange in order to be able to spike that football. And you see what Cal did by taking that timeout. They want to get organized on their end. They want to talk to their secondary so they don't give up any cheap points before the half. Yeah. So that will, they'll put the time back on the clock. And Hugh Freeze is giving an earful to Riley Johnson, the referee. And now Towns Magoo is coming out to attempt what would be a, what, 61-yard field goal? He's got the leg. The kid from Auburn High School just down the street. From 61 yards in a stadium where long field goals have come up short have been memorable in the past. Cal's got a deep man back there. This one's not even close. And Auburn's thinking, no, come on, not here. 
Cal bringing it back, and it'll just be a return out to the 35. That's how the first half will come to an end. And Justin Wilcox has to be thrilled with the way the Cal played. Absolutely. It's a dream first half for the Cal Bears traveling across the country. Kevin Connors, Trevor Maddich, ready for our halftime show. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Sling, where things are a little nervous around Toomer's Corner here in Auburn. This big crowd has to be a little stunned with the way Cal played in the first half. The Golden Bears have a seven-point lead as we start the second half. And their quarterback, the redshirt sophomore Fernando Mendoza, almost unrecruited out of high school, had the half of his life. Man, did he play well for the Golden Bears. Two touchdown passes to a freshman wideout. And Fernando Mendoza wasn't quite perfect, but almost was. The Golden Bears are going to have the ball after a touchback to start this second half. So Dave Fleming, Brock Osweiler back here in Auburn. Brock, how well did Fernando Mendoza play? Well, uh, put it this way. I don't remember a first half performance like like what we saw out of Fernando in a very, very long time. I mean, he was nearly flawless. 19 of 21, 205 yards and two touchdowns to go along with it. And don't forget the environment that he's playing in today at Jordan Hare Stadium. I mean, this place has been rocking. And, and he's been the coolest customer in the entire place. Nothing has got to Fernando Mendoza in the first half of football. Auburn finally found a way to get a little pass rush going at the end of the half. We'll see if that can continue here. Cal will run the ball on the first play of the second half, and Ott just gets tossed down for no gain. I mean, the numbers are, are so good. 19 to 21, over 200 yards, two touchdowns, best completion percentage and a half by a Cal quarterback in at least two decades. I think that says everything because you're you're talking about a couple first round quarterbacks Jared Goff Aaron Rodgers. I mean they've had some guys come out of Cal and for Fernando Mendoza to play the way he did in that first half. I can't wait to see if he keeps it up in the second. Now you feel like for Auburn's defense it's a big sequence here. Mendoza is going to roll right and throw and that one in traffic was completed. Man he had to fit that one in. And Isaiah Hunter, who has the two touchdown catches that time, just short of a first down, it'll be third and one. Yeah, the redshirt freshman Isaiah Hunter is having a fantastic ball game. Somebody the coaching staff really spoke highly about coming into this football game, and he showed why. They did a quick snap on one of these plays, break the huddle quickly, and then get to the line and snap it. They're not going to do that here. On third and one, Mendoza's in the shotgun. Handoff straight ahead, and that's just enough. Jade Knott for Cal first down. Let's go down to Stormy. Hold off. There is a penalty flag. Nope. I don't, I don't think so. Go ahead, Stormy. Head coach just. Cox at the break and he was just as complimentary as you guys were about Fernando Mendoza. He was talking about the poise that he showed especially on some of those three snap issues botch snaps that they had said he handled it exactly like you would like just hoping to get him a little bit of run support this half. Meanwhile Auburn head coach Hugh Free said what frustrated him most was wide open receivers getting missed in their base offense. He said there were a couple of slants should be a pitch and catch one's picked one's just a bad throw got to clean it up. Pressure on Mendoza there. And a throw away, so a rare incompletion. It'll be second and ten. And we'll just file that comment from Hugh Freeze away for when Auburn gets the ball. I mean, I expect we'll see Peyton Thorne still back there, but that leash might be getting shorter and shorter. No question, and rightfully so. It's because of all the skill position weapons that Peyton Thorne has at his disposal. Hugh Freeze expects his quarterback to be very efficient this season. So second and ten for Cal. First drive of the second half, Golden Bears leading by a touchdown. Pressure comes, Mendoza over the top, and that one is hauled in, but out of bounds. Tron Grizel made the catch, but out of bounds. Yeah, good call by the officials. Clearly his right foot was out of bounds. Auburn kind of living by a double-edged sword, bringing pressure up the middle from the linebacker position. Jaron Thompson does a great job in coverage, but when you bring that pressure and you play man-to-man -man outside, Mendoza's had a lot of success pushing the football down the field today. 
Auburn's defense has already forced more incompletions or as many incompletions as they did the entire first half. Third and ten. Pressure. He got rid of it. The completion, the cut up field, but tackled short of a first down. Mikey Matthews and a good play by Jaron Thompson. It'll be fourth down for Cal. Jaron Thompson making back to back plays for the Auburn Tigers defense, allowing them to get off the field. He's the captain and one of the leaders of the defense. He's one of those guys that, you know, I guarantee he's in at halftime and he knows, hey, I got to make a play to start this second half and get the ball back to, to my offense. And he did a fantastic job. Well, that's about as good of a sequence as Auburn's defense has had. Uh, that's a good sign for the second half for the Tigers. Fourth down, Lachlan Wilson, the punter. He'll try to angle that one. He didn't really, he angled it the opposite way. And it's going to stop inside the five. And it will be downed inside the five. Wow, great special teams execution by Cal. Not good field position for the Cal Auburn offense when we come back. Well, Cal leads by a touchdown a few minutes into the third quarter. The Taco Bell Live Ma student section, all season long student sections across the country, competing to be the Taco Bell Live Ma student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. It can get a little weird here at Auburn. Tigers starting their first drive of the second half at the two. So Peyton Thorne in the offense back on the field. And they will hand the ball off straight ahead and a nice gain on first down Jarquez Hunter who had one big run late in the half otherwise was really quiet. Yeah, and that was a great job by his right guard big number 77 Jeremiah right opening up a huge hole for Hunter to be able to run through and, and really get Auburn's backs off of the goal line a little breathing room at least gain of six on first down. Auburn scored on their first possession of the game. They had the ball five more times in the first half, got zero points. Hunter again, and a big hit, but he kept going forward, and he got close, I think, maybe about a half yard short of the first down. You know, and I think the biggest reason for the sputters with the Auburn offense in the first half, they just couldn't get into rhythm. They weren't able to find first downs, and a lot of that came from a lack of the run game, so to see some success for Auburn early on the ground is huge. And they did. They, they talked about it momentarily and decided that was enough for a first down. So first and 10 Auburn. Still deep in their own territory. Thorne kind of a design quarterback run and he took a pretty big hit maybe got two on first down Teddy Buchanan the transfer from UC Davis made the tackle yeah great job of scraping over the top by Buchanan coming in laying the wood on quarterback Peyton Thorne Thorne did a great job I thought at the end of the first half using his legs to get positive yards a lot of times, listen, the, the game's not going to go as planned. It's not always going to be pretty. Peyton Thorne taking command late in that game using his legs. Would like to see more of that in the second half. So they gave him three. Seven of 15 for 113 yards. He's run for 39. He will hand it off. Hunter kind of slipped but kept his balance and momentum going and got out to the 20 maybe a yard and a half short of another first down you know a quarterback's best friend is a good healthy run game and so for Auburn right now to lean on you know Hunter and that offensive line to help get Peyton Thorne in ryth rhythm it's going to be really critical in this second half third and two Auburn making an adjustment to the call, maybe. Handoff, Hunter, left side, first down, and more! Jarquez Hunter outside the 35, gets down to the 38. He got 18. Yeah, I thought the left guard, 52, Dylan Wade, did a phenomenal job of opening up a huge hole. You see 75 Connor Lou helping him out from the center position. Jeremiah Hunter doing the rest. Excuse me, Jarquez Hunter. Yeah, and it's obvious that Auburn has decided they need to run the ball more. So first down 
I mean, Hunter, he's one of the best backs in the SEC. And he did not get many chances in that first half. Pressure comes. Thorne is going down. Buchanan with another play from his linebacker spot, a loss of eight. Yeah, great play by Teddy Buchanan coming from the second level to force the sack. Auburn trying to kick Buchanan out with a block. Watch the tight end roll across the screen. Just completely whiffs, which is what allows Buchanan to force the negative play. So the run game success. They try to throw the ball on first and ten and lose eight with the sack. One step forward, two steps back. Just really hard to find a rhythm for Auburn right now. Second and 18, play fake. Thorne steps up, dumps it to Hunter, who takes a hit, stays on his feet. Man, that's a tough effort from Jarquez Hunter, because Cade Uluave, the middle linebacker, he's one of the really good linebackers in the country. Yes, yes, he is. But Hunter at 5'10", 210 pounds, low center of gravity. He's tough to bring down. You have to wrap up that running back. Otherwise, he's going to make you miss. That was some big extra yardage. It's still third and long. And now they're stopping the clock. The previous play is under further review for suspect targeting. Hmm. So they're going to review for targeting on that last play. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that it's Uluave, the, the linebacker who was the guy who was involved in the play. Uh, this is obviously huge because he's he might be Cal's best defensive player. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's going to be called targeting. Anytime you lower your helmet and you hit with the crown of the helmet, which is really the five inch radius directly at the very top of the helmet, it's going to be an automatic targeting call. Yeah, this has I, been an emphasis in college football the last couple years. Officials want to see defensive players coming in with their eyes up when they're making tackles. This is the exact opposite. I, I, the, to me, the, you got that indicator. You have the crown of the helmet. I think that's going to be targeting. Well, and the thing, too, with the crown, if, if you make contact with the crown, no indicators needed. It's just an automatic targeting call. You see Buchanan and Uluave making their case right now with the officials. But Justin Wilcox told us about Cade Uluave. He's got a chance to be a high NFL draft pick. He's that explosive, that physical, that talented. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Mm -hmm. And I, I, the only thing I can see is Jarquez Hunter lowering his own head at the last minute because uh, otherwise I'm palms up Flem. I'm palms up to me that that's a hit with the crown of the helmet I understand Hunter lowers his head but he's trying to find his balance you know it's not like he did it intentionally that's one where you wish you had the rules official to call in right now and get an explanation no kidding and so that means now it's third and ten Instead of a first down, and Uluave gets to stay in the game. Thorne back to pass. Thorne pressured. Thorne will go down. Teddy Buchanan, another play. He and Uluave are having great games from that linebacker spot, and Auburn's going to have to punt. Boy, you see the fire and passion coming from the linebacker position for the Cal Bears. Uluave. And Teddy Buchanan wrecking havoc in the backfield. You see big 44, Xavier Carlton really forcing Peyton Thorne to get off his spot initially. I'll tell you what, this defense is playing some inspired football this afternoon. Well, that's a good point. Your D-line sets it up. Your linebacker mates the play. They go clean it up. That's right. High punt, fair catch signal, and made just outside the 20. So Cal's defense gets the hold and the Golden Bears get the ball back 635 to go third quarter Cal leads by a touchdown this season all state will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund thank you all state just a perfect Saturday for college football here on the Plains and for Justin Wilcox and the Cal Golden Bears, long 
travel long trip something they're going to do a whole lot this year better get used to it if you're the Bears in a very hostile environment maybe the most hostile they'll face all year and they've got a touchdown lead with 635 to go in the third quarter two touchdown underdogs coming into this game and Cal has controlled the game Mendoza on first down will throw and it's incomplete Anderson trying for that back shoulder throw again really good coverage by kite on the outside Mendoza who's been really accurate today the ball gets a little bit away from him the credit Antonio kite in the coverage and they're finding ways finally to get some more pressure on Mendoza second and ten for Cal third incompletion of the half he only had two remember in the entire first half Thomas the young tailback to Mendoza's left and they will fake it to him throw Anderson went down to get it and did catch it before it hit the turf that was a phenomenal catch by Maven Anderson Mendoza had a very small window to fit that football through with the pass rush by Auburn Anderson doing a great job going down to the turf to make that catch to make it third and manageable. Hugh Freeze thought it was an incompletion. Cal going to run a play. So the catch stands throw and that one hits the receiver and pops up in the air two flags thrown and I think Auburn committed a personal foul in the backfield I think they roughed the quarterback the true freshman Malik blocked in gets called for the personal foul oh gosh and that just kills the momentum for Auburn I don't totally agree with that one. That seems, that seems a little ticky tack. Ooh, I don't know. I don't. I don't like that call. That's not rough in the passer in my book, but nevertheless, the officials called it, and that just hurts Auburn. They they just have not been able to get off the field on third down today. The officials didn't help them there. Yeah, that that easily could have been a no call. Instead, it's a first down for Cal and 15 yards out close to the 45. Mendoza throws and that one incomplete more good coverage. Yeah I don't think Maven Anderson was ready for that football there was a little bit of hand fighting going on down the sideline with Antonio Kite but Maven Anderson just didn't really seem like he recognized the football was coming his way. So Anderson will leave the field on second and ten. Now, Auburn's defense has definitely made some adjustments. Hand off, left side, and Thomas found a hole, got some positive yards, not a whole lot, to set up third down. Eugene Asante, who's had, he's had some big plays in this game. In Berkeley last year, he had one of the dominant defensive performer performances by any individual, I think, of the season in college football. No question. I thought he was the player of the game in last year's last year's game out in Berkeley but this is exactly where Auburn needs Asante to step up he needs to make a game changing play for the Auburn Tigers here on third down he was coming off the field one of his coaches yelled at him no you're not coming out Mendoza throws and it's incomplete he took a hit and he actually found a way to find Thomas who maybe wasn't expecting it couldn't corral it and it's fourth down no running back Javen Thomas he was in pass protection he just happened to get up and credit Fernando Mendoza are trying to make a play he was under extreme duress but credit the Auburn Tigers defense tremendous pass rush to force Mendoza off his spot and give the football back to their offense it almost turned into an incredible improv play from Mendoza it's like a little hook pass yeah and if Thomas was able to come up with that football there was nobody 40 yards near him so Lachlan Wilson had a brilliant punt last time this time angling it toward the sideline and it's going to be another great punt by Wilson. Wow. That's two of them in this half that he's pinned Auburn at the two. Pretty amazing Auburn ball when we come back. 
you're watching the SEC on ESPN from Auburn, Alabama, which is, you probably already knew this, a long way from Berkeley, California. Cal's got to get used to it. 20,000, almost 21,000 total travel miles coming up this year. Cal now playing in the ACC. Auburn, just for a contrast, Auburn has their first five games of the year at home. This is number two of five in a row at home to start the year. Big contrast. Auburn's going to travel like 2,000 total miles all season. Thorne from the end zone. Design quarterback run and a nice job to get Auburn out of the shadow of the goal line. So Cal's defense, another advantageous starting point. The punter, Lachlan Wilson, has been awesome. Well, special teams are starting to be special for Cal. And that's something that Justin Wilcox said to us this week when we met with him. He said, listen, our special teams, if we're going to go into Auburn and get a win, they're going to need to be great for us and play a big role. They missed a short field goal, very short field goal in the first half. Otherwise, the, the punt game in particular has been excellent. So second down and two for Auburn. Hunter gets the carry. Hunter starting to, and that's not Hunter. That's Damari Alston with a nice burst over the right side for an Auburn first down. Alston, a very experienced running back for Auburn. You really get the sense that this Auburn offensive line, they're starting to take over the game here in the second half. They've had a lot of success running the football. Under four minutes to go, third quarter. Well, they have moved the ball on the ground much better since halftime. But they still have just the seven points from their first drive of the game. Well, first down, Auburn. Hand off again. And this time, Alston gets wrestled to the ground right at the 20. He did get three yards on first down. And, and you see Auburn trying to find their footing. They're slowing down the tempo in this football game. And, and I don't really think that's how they want to play. They want to play up tempo. But when they're not converting on third down and getting a fresh set of downs and keeping the offense on the field, you keep putting your defense in really tough situations. So Hugh Freeze electing to slow down the game right now. And you do have plenty of time still, three minutes plus a whole quarter, but you are down. So I think you're right. This is not how Hugh Freeze wants it to go on offense, but I think it's the head coach playing some complimentary football. Play fake. Pressure comes, and Thorne is going to get sacked inside the 10. He got away from Buchanan at first, but then the support and the sack for a huge loss. Teddy Buchanan, the inside linebacker for Cal, number 10. Nobody getting a hand on him, blitzing from the second level. It was a field blitz. They brought Teddy as well as the nickel off the out edge of your screen. Cal just doing a tremendous job here in the second half. Anytime Auburn has elected to throw the football, Cal's gone into the backfield. And Jair Smith is going to get credit for the sack, and Auburn from deep in their own territory on third and long will just hand it off. So they're going to have to punt the ball back. Hunter gets it out to the 15. And it'll be fourth down for the Tigers. That sack, a huge play. It's huge. You know, and that's really happened back-to-back -back drives for Auburn's offense. They're running the football with great success, picking up positive yards. Then they elect to throw the football. Cal brings pressure. Credit Peter Sermon, defensive coordinator. Great timing on bringing those blitzes. And then they're forcing Auburn into negative plays. And what a game for Teddy Buchanan, who was playing at the FCS level last year. And he is showing he belongs at this level here today. High punt. Fairly short punt. And no fair catch signal. Wow. Mikey Matthews got, got a fair catch that one. And somehow held on to the ball. That was a huge hit by Antonio Kite. Wow, so Cal gets the ball back. Catch the U.S. Open men's championship match tomorrow, 2 Eastern on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. Coverage begins with a men's preview show at 1 Eastern. Chance for an American to win the U.S. Open. Hasn't happened in a long time. Now the Auburn band, the Auburn fans. That's the hit you were talking about. Antonio Kite, cornerback for Auburn, playing a great game on defense and making a huge play on special teams. A minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Cal's going to hand the ball off, and the carry for Kadarius Callaway over the right side. 
short gain of two. Cal's offense hasn't done much in the second half. No, but but they've done what they've needed to do. They're they're playing within rhythm of what the football game's presenting. But I think the most impressive thing that Cal's done is is they've won the time of possession today. And the reason why they're winning that time of possession is because they're picking up third downs. And Fernando Mendoza, he's protected the football. Auburn has dialed up much more pressure here in the second half. They made it harder on the young Cal quarterback who's under pressure here dumps it short and a great open field tackle. Matthews gets wrestled to the ground by Champ Anthony. It'll be third down. That was a great job by Champ Anthony. Plays the nickel position for Auburn. The slot corner just tracking Mikey Matthews who's trying to slice across the formation. Great open field tackle by the Auburn Tigers. Third and nine. Pressure immediately, and it's incomplete. Almost unblocked. Kieran Crawford got in there and forced the incompletion. It's fourth down. That was a tremendous pass rush move by Keon Crawford. Left tackle, number 78, Victor Stoffel. Just got beat at the point of attack. Didn't even get a hand on Crawford. Crawford making a huge play for his defense when they needed it. And I don't know if that's because Nick Morrow is banged up and he's out why he isn't playing but that was a whiff on a block. Now Wilson with another punt this one though not quite as perfect and Scott will return it to the 20 but another Cal player had a helmet ripped off and there's another penalty flag. Now this might be going against Auburn. When you see that Cal helmet on the turf you kind of assume an Auburn player ripped it off. Personal foul against the kicking team number nine, lost his helmet and continued to participate. That 15 yard penalty will be added on to the end of the run. First down. Okay, so he just lost his helmet. It wasn't a penalty. And when that happens in college football, in the NFL, you can keep playing. In college, you're not supposed to keep playing. And that's a 15 yard penalty. Yeah, he just kept running down the field after the helmet came off. And obviously that's a rule for player safety. They just want players to go down or get out of bounds when that helmet comes off. I mean, I always sympathize with players there. It's just so hard to tell yourself, even without a helmet, like I'm supposed to just stand here? Absolutely. No, it, it, it feels so foreign. But how about this field position for the Auburn Tigers? This is what they haven't had a single possession in the second half. They've started their, their previous two possessions inside their own five-yard line. And maybe Hugh Freeze now can open up the offense a little bit more. Could be the final play of the third quarter. Play fake. Thorne is going to throw, and it wobbles and is intercepted. Intercepted Jair Smith. Comes up with another takeaway. That was Ryan McCullough with the pressure off the edge for Cal. Nowhere to go with the football downfield trying to Hugh Freeze is trying to take a shot. He has two posts running deep down the field. The great coverage by the Cal Bears forces Peyton Thorne to hold on to the football. Cal Bears football when we come back. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Sling. We start the fourth quarter. I don't think many saw this one coming. Cal's got a chance for a huge win on the road. Up seven with the ball after the turnover. And they hand it off right side. Run getting to the corner. That's Callaway who does step out of bounds. Just a moment ago, the head coach of Auburn, Hugh Freeze, with Stormy. Coach Freeze, I know that's not the way you wanted to end the quarter. What's it going to take to take control here in the last? Well, defense playing really well in the third quarter. They got us backed up every possession except for that one, and we're not protecting the quarterback at all. And they're just they're 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 beating us with their rush and the one on ones, and so a right tackle's really banged up. So we, we got to go with somebody else, but got to figure out a way. We got guys open, but we didn't have any opportunities backed up. 
Defense keeps playing this way. We'll find a way to get one in. Yep. All right, thanks, Stormy. Thanks to Coach Freeze. Callaway gets another carry. Gets stopped, though, on second and three. I don't know if he got any positive yardage, so it'll be third down for Cal after the turnover. Trying to turn that into some points. Their offense has been stymied. No, they really have. And, and, and you want to talk about a critical third down in this game. Auburn down seven points here in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a pivotal third down to decide this football game. Low snap. Mendoza wasn't expecting it, and he still found a way to get the ball to his wide receiver, Hunter, for a first down. I mean, the snap operation has not been very good for Cal, and somehow Mendoza's overcoming it. I'll tell you what, Fernando Mendoza just putting on an absolute clinic on great quarterback play today. He has not had the best pocket at times. He hasn't had open receivers. He's making plays outside the pocket, and then you see what he did there. Changed his arm angle, got the football to Hunter for the first down. That was a huge pickup. I mean, am I wrong in thinking that most quarterbacks, that happens, and the play gets blown up. Mendoza will throw incomplete. He was trying to throw it short with pressure in his face. Sailed it past Callaway, and there was a moment there where it was hanging in the air. Hugh Freeze maybe was thinking, maybe we can get an interception of our own. Yeah, Hugh thought there was a play to be made there by his defense, but credit Austin Keys from the linebacker position, getting the initial pressure on Mendoza, and then Mendoza did a great job of getting that football thrown away to save the field position. So second and ten, it would be a long field goal from here. But Justin Wilcox wants some more yardage from his offense. Three points would obviously be huge in the fourth quarter. Up by a touchdown. Mendoza. It almost was intercepted. Well, there was some sort of miscommunication because the receiver did not come back for the ball. Can Lee did. And he dropped it. Wow. Can Lee had that. That was a game changing play that went right through his hands. He was there to make it. And that was going to be a surefire pick six and a touchdown for Auburn. See Mendoza. He knows he got away with one there. Mendoza just five of 13 in the second half after an almost perfect first half. Another offline snap. Another short throw, and this one was dropped. Cardwell, it was a little bit behind him. Incomplete. And I think that means Cal is going to punt. No. Nope. Another snap that's off target. Mendoza does a great job adjusting to it and going to get it. Gives an accurate football to Cardwell on the halfback screen. Cardwell needs to bring in that ball for the Bears. How about this? They're going to try a 55-yard field goal. Ryan Coe. Play clock winding down. They get it snapped. Kick is up. And that kick is no good. Had a lot of leg. He missed it to the right. And the Auburn defense comes up with another hold. Now the question is, can Auburn get the offense going? They're still down a touchdown. And the SEC opener is over on ABC, Flem. All right, Kevin, lots going on around the country right now. Auburn gets the ball back, and uh, Jarquez Hunter, their star tailback, who's had a much better second half. Auburn starting with its best field position of the game here in the fourth quarter, down seven. With under 13 to go. And as, as an offense, you want to run to win in the fourth quarter. So I expect Auburn to leave, lean very heavily on this big offensive line and Jarquez Hunter here in the fourth quarter. And you heard Hugh Freeze mention our right tackle's banged up. Ronan Chambers, the backup, is in now. Hunter gets swallowed up, and the ball comes out! They didn't blow the play dead. Cal kept playing, and they ripped the ball free, and Craig Woodson comes away with it. Teddy Buchanan making another play from the linebacker position. The UC Davis transfer stripping that football away from Hunter. I mean, Hunter almost got penalized because he's so tough to bring down. He kept the play alive. Oh, what a game for Buchanan. Woodson's come up with the ball a couple times.
He did. He just ripped it straight out, just like your coach to do. Let the first guy get there, wrap him up. Second guy come in, rip at that football. That's textbook defensive football by Peter Sherman and his defensive unit. Wow. Teddy Buchanan playing his first FBS game against an FBS opponent in his career. He's got eight tackles, two sacks, and now a forced fumble and some other pressure plays. Have yourself a day, Teddy. The lights are not too bright. It's been a lot of fun to watch that linebacker play. And now Cal, I mean, the Bears are being handed a golden opportunity here. On first down, after the turnover, the handoff straight ahead. Thomas with a good positive game pushing forward. I mean, at this rate, if Cal gets any points out of this drive, in the fourth quarter, the way Auburn's offense is going, Cal's in a great position. That's exactly right. If you're Auburn, you feel like you 100% need to cause disruption in the backfield. You need to get Cal behind the sticks. They're already 0 for 2 on field goals today. So you want to try to force Cal into another long field goal to see if they can convert. Second down and six. Mendoza, another handoff and a big hole. Thomas, there he goes. Touchdown, Cal. JV and Thomas cut it back, and there was nothing but open space in front of him. Wow. How about that complimentary football? Get the turnover, run to win in the fourth quarter, pop an explosive run for a touchdown. That was clinic play by that offensive line for the Cal Bears. And Hugh Freeze knows his team is in big trouble now. They'd had 41 total yards of offense Cal had in the second half. They got 32 on that play alone. The fumble and just a couple plays later, the young Javian Thomas makes it 21-7 Cal. JV and Thomas doing a tremendous job making Auburn pay for the lack of gap integrity, but it all got started with the turnover. Teddy Buchanan forcing it for the Cal Bears, and then JV and Thomas punching it in for six. 21 7, Cal. ESPN College Football is presented by Sling. Choose and customize your channel lineup. Sling, let's do that. Wow, what a sequence for Cal. Force the turnover and then the sophomore tailback, JV and Thomas, who's got some real burst. And man, did he burst through the line to make it 21-7 Cal on the road at Auburn. 11 and a half to go and the Tigers are up against it. Cal's going to kick it deep through the end zone. So that'll be a touchback and the Auburn offense back on the field. Let's get a quick check with Kevin in studio again. OK, so that's a competitive good game. This one is a shocker to most people, I think, in SEC country. 21-7 Cal. Cal's defense has been dominant. Peyton Thorne is going to try to scramble. He'll go out of bounds. Just not feeling like he's got anywhere to throw the ball. Let's go down to the Cal sidelines where Stormy is. Well, Dave, you can imagine the vibes are very high over here. In that last break, a bunch of players came over to this far left corner where the Cal contingent of fans is. Hyped them up like crazy. There was even one player who said, SEC, this is Cali ball, baby. Not so loud now. So they are feeling themselves a little bit over here. Easy. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just reporting the news. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not putting that on you. The throw and what a leaping catch, but out of bounds. Cam Coleman, I mean, he shows off his physical gifts there, but it was thrown out of bounds. Yeah, trying to use all six foot three of that big frame, big catch radius, but not big enough for that ball. So now it's third and seven. Auburn, I mean, we got under 11 minutes to go. I, I guess it's not four down territory from this part of the field. Yeah, not yet. Three timeouts, plenty of time left in this game.
Pressure got picked up. Thorne throws and it's caught. What a catch. Leaping Robert Lewis for a much needed Auburn first down. That was a huge pickup for Auburn and give a lot of credit to the running back Damari Olsen coming up in pass protection. Blitzing linebacker coming right down the middle and that's what allows Peyton Thorne to get the throw off. He's going to take another hit here and the pass falls incomplete. Hugh Freeze said it to Stormy when we started the fourth quarter. We're not giving our quarterback a chance to make any plays. I'm not sure that's entirely the story, but he has been under duress. Yeah, I think everybody has their hand in this one. I think on that previous play, Peyton actually drifted into that contact a little bit. I'd like to see him stay in the middle of the pocket, but then you're exactly right. The offensive line has had their issues in pass protection today, but also give a lot of credit to Cal. They've done a great job of covering this very skilled wide receiver room, and not a lot of places go with the football. I mean, Teddy Buchanan is just playing an all-time game at linebacker for Cal. Bears bring more pressure. Thorne on the move. He's going to scramble now and sort of stumbles forward across the 45 out to the 47. It was a very impressive play. Uh, Peyton Thorne made something out of nothing. He wanted to try to throw the football to the right side of the field to Lambert Smith. Lambert Smith didn't even run a route. So Peyton Thorne had nowhere to go with the ball. Found some positive yards. Third down. He'll throw it quick left and a blocker up ahead. That'll be an Auburn first down. Malcolm Simmons, first time we've said his name all game. Very talented freshman wide receiver, his first catch. Yeah, he's one of the freeze four, four big-time wide receiver prospects, all from the state of Alabama. Great pickup by Auburn. So Auburn on the move into Cal territory here. Thorne is going to throw it short left. And Uluave with the open field tackle of Alston. Just a gain of a couple yards. Yeah, there was some great protection by the offensive line on that last play, allowing Peyton Thorne to clearly work all the way through his progression, getting all the way to his check down, which is his fourth read. Auburn substituted, so Cal's going to substitute. Basically, a whole new defensive line coming on the field. Clock continues to roll. We're under nine minutes to go. Thorne throws short right in a big hit after Lewis made the catch. Wow. Marcus Harris. A big time hit by the cornerback transfer from University of Idaho. Coming in, laying the wood on Lewis. Great job by Lewis holding on to that football. Well, they might review this one. I don't think that's targeting, though. So they are going to review it, and I don't blame them for stopping and taking a look, but that, to me, looked like... Flem, I'm with you. I, I think it's a good football play. The, the issue, if you're a Cal fan, though, is there is contact to the head or neck area. There's the indicator. You see the shoulder coming in. I mean, this is going to definitely be a judgment call by the officials. Hmm. I mean, and I think technically he is still he's defenseless because he's, he's yet to make a full football move. That being Robert Lewis at the wide receiver position. So the question is, does that count as contact to the head or neck area? Well, it is the head and neck. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this is called targeting. You know, a few years ago, this would have just been a good football play, but definitely want to protect the football players and, and targeting is a, a huge emphasis in college football right now. Didn't lead with the crown of the helmet. I think attempted to make the strike point below the head but with the defenseless receiver did that shoulder get up in the face mask or was the contact more in the torso and sort of the reverb was up higher. Uh, this one's going to be close and it's just so hard for defenders. You know you, you can't go high. You, you, you can't go too low. It, the, the, the target that you're trying to hit is just so small and Robert Lewis at 5'10", 188 pounds. It's not like he has a huge, huge frame. So it's to be interesting to see which way it goes, but. There was a personal foul targeting. I 
I will say this. I, I do agree with the call. There, there is certainly contact to the head or neck area. There is the indicator when leading with the shoulder. It's just a, it's a bummer deal for Marcus Harris. He's played a tremendous football game today. Thought he was making a clean tackle, but by definition, that is targeting. So instead of third and three, it's first down inside the 20. Marcus Harris will have to miss the rest of this game and the first half next week. He's one of Cal's very best defensive players. Well, the clock will start to wind again. Auburn's got to get this one into the end zone. Running out of time, down by two touchdowns at home. Thorne, a keeper. Thorne trying to direct a blocker. He gets a block, but couldn't stay in bounds. Goes out of bounds inside the 10, I think just about a yard short of a first down. Great job of Peyton Thorne using his lead blocker and tight end, Rivaldo Fairweather. <laughs> Starting to sense this momentum shifting Auburn's way down 14 here midway through the fourth. Yeah, I mean, for the Tigers, if you do get it in the end zone, you got plenty of time. Now, keep an eye at the top of your screen. You have Hearns, who's a backup defensive back that just came in for Marcus Harris, matched up against Lambert Smith. See if Thorne is looking in that direction. He's looking left instead. And it's incomplete. Penalty flag thrown. Coleman, the intended receiver, Noel Williams, is going to get penalized. I don't love that call. I think that was pretty good. Pass to the first. Defense, number three. Puts the foul in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Listen, don't get me wrong. Williams does have his hands out there on Cam Coleman, but I think they're both battling pretty good. If anything, I think the call is because Williams didn't get his head around to track the football, which a lot of times is just an automatic foul when the officials see that. All right, Hunter in at tailback. First and goal from the two. And extra tight ends in for Auburn. They're going to direct snap it to Hunter, it looks like. And now what? Did Auburn move? This is a big call coming. The disconcerting signals by the defense. Ball start. Offense number 75. Wow. By Doug Kittley. First down. That's the center, Connor Liu. So instead of first and goal from the two, it goes back to the seven. And for Auburn, even if it just means an extra play or two and you still get it in the end zone, that could be costly. Yeah, that's such a costly penalty for Auburn. Just something you can't do. Got to stay disciplined in these critical moments. Well, it's definitely four plays to get in the end zone. Auburn's not going to be kicking a field goal. There's that guy you were talking about, Lambert Smith, out. Yeah, I'm going to test the backup cornerback, Hearns, if I'm playing quarterback right now. Hunter gets the carry and Hunter gets stopped. Teddy Buchanan again. Having himself a day. What an impressive performance for the senior linebacker. Defensive coordinator Peter Sermon told us that guy, number 10, he did, couldn't join the team until the fall. So what do you say, 50, 60 hours of Zoom meetings over the summer to get him up to speed? Yeah, it was impressive. You can tell he's just a, a film junkie and, and all about football. Second and goal for Auburn. Under seven minutes to go. Little swing pass. Hunter is going to try to get to the corner. And Buchanan with some help. Miles Williams, the safety, was the first guy there. Shoved Hunter out of bounds. It's third and goal. Very critical two-play sequence coming up here. Third and fourth down. You mentioned it, Flynn. This is certainly four-down territory for Auburn. I've said it a couple times, but if I'm the offensive coordinator for Auburn, I want, I want to test Hearns. You know, he's the backup cornerback. He's going to be at the bottom of your screen. I want to test him with him just coming onto the field. Matched up against Lewis in this particular formation. Play clock down to five. Pressure comes. Thorne gets hit. And it's intercepted! A penalty flag thrown, though. No Williams intercepted it. He was trying to get it to Lambert Smith. And a flag was thrown. And I think that's going to... Pass to the Defense, number three. Another huge call goes against Cal. 
Wow, what a break for Peyton Thorne and the Auburn Tigers. I, I, I didn't see pass interference initially. Still looking for a good shot. That, that's not pass interference in my book. That's that's two skill guys on the outside playing late in the ball game, fourth quarter. Cal brought an all-out pressure, blitz zero. Peyton Thorne didn't recognize it till late. I, I completely disagree with that call. I think that's a defensive back playing good football in a critical situation. So now here we go again. First and goal from the two. Thorne keeps it. Touchdown, Auburn. Well, it definitely wasn't easy, and they got maybe some help, but Auburn does what they had to do, punch it into the end zone, and an extra point away from making this a seven-point game. Well, and that's the game of football. Sometimes you just need the luck to bounce your way. You need the calls to go your way, and that's what happened for Auburn on that drive. Credit Peyton Thorne on that last play, making a great read in the zone read scheme. Defensive end crashes hard. He makes the correct read, pulls it finds himself in the end zone. They had not scored since their first drive less than five minutes into the game. Extra point up and good. That's big. So it's 21-14. You got 6.06 to go. Auburn's got all three of their timeouts. Their defense has been playing well. They had to have this one, though. And after the penalty, Thorne walks it in. We got a seven-point game. You're watching the SEC on ESPN from Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. Three Heisman Trophy winner statues outside this great college football venue. And Auburn fans now feeling like, okay, we got a chance. After a drive got extended, a turnover got negated with a pass interference call. The touchdown makes it a seven point game. And Auburn's going to kick it deep through the end zone. The Cal offense will come back on the field later tonight. Catch more college football on ESPN+. Plus. you got number nine, Missouri, against Buffalo, Florida, and Sanford. Then LSU hosting Nichols State to get ESPN+. Plus. Go to ESPNplus.com or download the ESPN app. Well, here we go. Cal, I, Justin Wilcox, this was during the timeout. I, I, I understand why he was unhappy. I completely agree. I mean, that, that was maybe the most critical sequence of the entire game. You, you have a targeting call. You have two questionable uh, pass interference calls. One was going to be an interception for your team, which probably would have sealed the football game. I understand where Justin Wilcox is at. So now the Cal offense back out there. Another low snap. And that goes down. A loss of two or three on the play. Falk has had a big game. For the Auburn defense, it's second and long. Well, Falk's been a game wrecker. He's really kept his team in this ball game, making play after play from that defensive end position. TJ Session at right tackle, 72, just beat right at the snap. And you're about to hear this place get loud. Thomas in for Ott. Cal's looking to throw. Mendoza short to Thomas, who cuts it upfield. Man, he's a little guy, but he has some toughness to him. Well short of the first down. That was a fantastic job by Thomas navigating all that junk and traffic inside between the offense and defensive line and getting out on the halfback screen. Heads up playing. Great job by Mendoza being patient. Third and six. Mendoza steps up. Mendoza's going to try to run. He'll get the first down and go out of bounds. Fernando Mendoza went down on the sideline, and he might be hurt. I don't know if he tripped on somebody or what, but he went down and is hurt. Well, you hate to see it. He's played such a good football game for the Cal Bears today. Oh, no. One of the Auburn trainers immediately came over to help him. He has been tremendous. And, and nothing bigger than that last third down play. Auburn playing man defense. Mendoza recognizes it. There's no one accounting for the quarterback. So Chandler Rogers is going to start to warm up the backup. 
And Mendoza does get up. He says, I don't need any help. Wow. Oh, it's so good to see. Oh, yeah, it's like such an awkward step. Like jammed his, you could almost see that knee buckle, that right knee buckle. Yeah, he's fired up going to the sidelines, cheering on his teammates. He's really put his team on his back today and just had a fantastic performance. Maybe it was the left knee. He was trying to get off the field on his own power. Well, it's a huge first down. Mendoza's got the helmet off, and he's, I think, going to go into the tent. So welcome to the game, Chandler Rogers. Yeah, what a moment to step into. Ooh. And off. And you have to figure Auburn knew that was coming. Callaway gets the carry. Tell you what, these, these Cal running backs, there hasn't been a lot of space in that offensive front today to run through, but they've they've ran really hard. They keep their legs going. It's really been a running back room by committee today. Yeah, hoping for the best. Fernando Mendoza going into that tent. Auburn's got all three timeouts. Ott's on the sideline. He's had no room to operate and probably not close to 100% healthy. The quarterback will keep it. Over the left side, first down and smart enough to stay in bounds, Chandler Rogers. Although the clock was going to wind no matter what, still keep that clock moving. What a heads up play by Chandler Rogers. Just his second play of the game, coming in cold off the bench. Does a fantastic job on the zone read, picking up a fresh set of downs. Brock, I wonder if this is a spot where that new technology, where the coach can talk to the quarterback. You got a guy, you can talk through situations. So key, so key. You, you have your coach in your ear right now. Hey, remind everybody, stay in bounds. Here's what we're thinking on this play. That's a great point, Flem. So first and 10, Rodgers will hand it off straight ahead. Callaway again. They're into Auburn territory, and Auburn's going to have to use their timeouts now. So they call the timeout there. You got the two-minute timeout as well, new to college football this year. Cal's backup quarterback trying to finish off a massive win for the Golden Bears. And listen, I, I know we're only in week two, but in this next two minutes and 59 seconds, we're going to find out so much about these teams. Auburn is supposed to be big, physical. Well, right now, Cal's running the football, right? And if Cal travels to the East Coast and gets this big win in SEC territory, what does that say about them going forward? So we're going to find a lot out about these ball clubs in the last three minutes. I mean, the ACC is so wide open this year that, I mean, Cal's got a chance to be a factor in the ACC race. You come here and win this game, the way this conference is looking, no question. And you got to remember, they're missing two starting wide receivers, two starting offensive line. This offensive line is just patched together right now with duct tape and super glue. So if they can pull off this win and get their team healthy, you're exactly right. They're going to make some noise in the ACC. But first things first, they got to win this game. They're up seven, under three minutes to go. Mendoza, you saw him there with his helmet, but it's still Chandler Rogers on second and eight. With Callaway in the backfield. Rodgers handed it off. Callaway protecting the ball. And another Auburn timeout. Just five seconds rolled off the clock on that play. Peyton Thorne hoping to have one more chance here today. Now coming up later tonight. It's a big game. Speaking of the ACC, NC State, always dangerous at home, always dangerous as an underdog. Tennessee's good. The Dukes Mayo Classic presented by Capital One tonight, 730 Eastern on ABC. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Tennessee has one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country. NC State by Coach Dorn. They're always coached extremely well. Physical defense. It's going to be a fun matchup. All right, so now 2.54 to go. Mendoza trying to fire up his guys. And you have a huge decision if you're offensive coordinator Mike Blesch right now. It's third down. Do we put the football in the air to try to ice the game? Do we keep it on the ground? It's going to be very interesting to see what he calls here. 
is no knock on Chandler Rogers, who had a really good year last year at Southern Miss, but with him in the game, I don't know if I'm throwing it, if it's me. Empty backfield on third and five. Ott motions into the backfield. Rodgers is going to keep it. Rodgers gets hit and goes down. And he's short, well short. Auburn uses its final timeout. Cal's kind of in no man's land here. We yeah. saw Ryan Longwell there kicking coach, talking to the head coach. Listen, you've, you've already missed two field goals. If I'm Justin Wilcox, we're going to do the pooch punt. We're going to try to pin Auburn inside their own five-yard line. Listen, the punter, Lachlan Wilson, he's played a phenomenal game. The special teams for the Cal Bears have been special. I'm allowing my punter to pin Auburn deep, and then let's see if Peyton Thorne can drive his team down the field to tie the ball game. And that definitely looks like what Cal's decided. That's the place kicker, Ryan Coe. He takes his helmet off. Lachlan Wilson, who's had two brilliant punts in this second half is going to try to do it again. I mean, they were game-changing punts. Auburn, you know, it wasn't until their third possession of the second half that they actually had some breathing room and decent field position to work with. And we'll see if Auburn tries to dial up some pressure on this punt. Blocked a punt last week. It's a big play in this game right here. Cal's up seven, under three minutes to go. And I thought the Bears moved. They did. Ball starts. Offense, number nine. Five yards penalty. Fourth down. So now Wilson standing back at Cal's own 40. No pressure on Wilson, but a pooch type punt. And the Cal special team player found the ball and downed it, I think, before it crossed that plane. No, it's a touchback. He did not. Well, we're definitely going to show that again. That was almost perfect. But first, let's get another update in studio with Kevin. What a win for the Huskies. Oh, my goodness. Huge upset. Auburn trying to avoid an upset. They've got the ball. Under three minutes to go. Cam Coleman with the catch. And the Tigers are on the move. They need to get to the end zone. And Coleman's hurting after that last catch. Cal's defense needs a stop. Thorne over the top left side, and it's intercepted! No Williams! There's not going to be a penalty on this one. The interception, Coleman was hurt, and they threw it to Coleman, who I don't think had his normal ability to go up and try to get the ball. And Cal comes away with a turnover. No timeouts for Auburn. 2.13 to go. Unbelievable. I, I just I can't believe it. It's, it's Peyton Thorne's third interception of the day. Somebody who had so many high expectations and people in SEC country really thought he was going to really take off this year. Second season with Hugh Freeze just underthrows that football. And Noel Williams goes up there and makes him pay. I mean, you got to give Williams credit for a great interception, but... The turnover is just devastating. Now, this is what I was pointing out. Cam Coleman, when he Cam caught Coleman that first play, play yeah, he was Tigers trying to get out of the move. game. They need to get to the end zone. Coleman's hurting after that last catch. They couldn't get him off the field. They were trying to get. Needs a stop. Thorne. Camden Brown the top in the game. Left side and it. threw it to him. Yeah, you can, you can see he just doesn't have the juice that he's used to having. Cal hands the ball off, Mendoza, and Cal does not mind that. Noel Williams played a phenomenal game last week, backing it up with another great one this week. Goes up, which could ultimately end up being the game-sealing interception for the Cal Bears. What a performance by this defense today. I mean, he could have had three. He had the one negated by the penalty. 
Cal two minutes away from a huge win. Well, they're headed for the exits. The Auburn Tigers, four turnovers, three interceptions. They hadn't done that since last year in Berkeley. They found a way to win that game. It's going to be very hard for them to do that here today. Cal leads by seven. No Auburn timeouts. So the best case scenario, you stop Cal, force a punt. You get it back with maybe like 25, 30 seconds left. Mendoza back in the game, hands it off, and Thomas almost took it all the way. He got tackled short of midfield. So now it's third down. It was a great tackle by Champ Anthony. Nickelback for the Auburn Tigers. If he doesn't make that tackle, the game's done. Cal can run out the clock. Disastrous day for the Auburn offense. You got to give that guy and his whole staff and team credit for the defensive game that Cal has played. It's the defensive performance, creating the turnovers, four on the day for Auburn, but then also controlling the time of possession on the road with your offense. Under 300 total yards for Auburn. On third down, Thomas gets another carry, and he won't get there. So stop short. So now the clock is rolling, and Cal will probably take it all the way down and then call timeout. And you can see the difference there. Play clock, game clock. After a punt, maybe you get it back with around 30 seconds to go. Well, I tell you what, if I'm Cal, though, I, you know, this is this is just uh, it's an interesting situation. You're going to try to get Auburn to jump even with that punt unit. Auburn's going to stay disciplined and give Peyton Thorne one more chance. So Wilcox just waiting over on the sideline with one of the officials next to him. And now timeout. 33 seconds on the clock. Well, the Auburn offense just not clean. The tip ball and the interception by Williams. The, the field goal try that came up way short. That's the interception for Smith. The ball ripped out by Teddy Buchanan, who had a monster game here today. And then that last one. Listen, Auburn's a football team that a week ago played nearly a perfect football game, winning 73-3. to And today, they just couldn't get in rhythm on offense, on defense. They couldn't get off the field on third down. You saw the special teams, the missed field goal. They just couldn't get into sync. Well, Peyton Thorne getting ready for one last chance over on the Auburn sideline. Wilson, almost a high snap. They came after it. There's nobody back to receive, and the ball is going to bounce into the end zone, which is good for Auburn. It helps the field position, and it saved a couple seconds there. Certainly, and that was a great job by Wilson catching that snap and getting the football off against an all-out block situation. That, that was the priority. That was pretty big. <laughs> so 28 seconds, no timeouts. It's not impossible, but... Auburn one last gasp need to go 80 yards and Coleman will not be in the game. Peyton Thorne. Throws and that one is intercepted. Why not to end the game. Another pick. This time from Lou Maggia Hearns, who came in for Marcus Harris, who got ejected from the game because of targeting. The fourth interception of the game, the fifth Auburn turnover seals the deal. You know, it just seems like Peyton Thorne threw that football up. I, I'm not exactly sure where he was trying to go with that, and, and Hearns made him pay. Fourth interception on the day for Peyton Thorne, fifth overall turnover by the Auburn Tigers. His, his receiver's running a go route on the outside, but the football is nowhere close to where it needs to be. And, and like I said, Hearn's there to make the play. Fourth interception on the day. Ooh, there will be some huge questions to be answered for this Auburn team on the offensive side of the ball after this one. Cal now in victory formation. 
And fitting that Fernando Mendoza is the guy to take the snap and take the knee. Yeah, he deserved it. He played one of the best college football games I've seen out of a young quarterback in a long time. And a ton of credit needs to go to Justin Wilcox, his entire staff, for coming in here today, hostile environment, and really controlling the football game from the get-go. When's the last time Cal had a win that big? It's been a while. First win against an SEC team since 2019 on the road in this environment for all of us. Brock Osweiler, Stormy Bonatoni, Dave Fleming saying so long. Let's get you back to studio with Kevin and Trevor.